Okay, so this is a new model, um, and you can see it's a Revel 1 to 1 44th scale space shuttle with um, external tank and solid rocket boosters. This is quite an old kit, but um, obviously I have an interest in this kind of thing, and there is a couple of um, small scale. Um, space shuttles around, but um, this is the one that's most easily available. I think it's still in production. It's quite an old kit, but it, um, it's not a bad kit. Um, there is a Tamiya 1 to 100 scale, which I don't think is in production. It's quite expensive on eBay. But um, this is the one that I've plumped for, for a space shuttle model. It's also available um, just the orbiter, without the um, external tank and uh, boosters, uh, which is obviously cheaper. Um, and it's also available with the 747 um, shuttle carrier aircraft which would make for an interesting model but this is the one that I've gone for with the external tanks to make the full um, launch stack version um, this was I think about £25 from um, Amazon I think it was uh, the Orbiter only version is um, £17 and I don't know the price of the uh, shuttle carrier aircraft version. Um, the uh, Orbiter only version is sold as Atlantis but I do believe it comes with other decals. Um, this comes with decals for um, the surviving sh um, shuttle orbiters, uh, Discovery, Atlantis and Endeavour and also the Enterprise, but there will be differences in making Enterprise. So um, without further ado, let's open up the box and uh, see what we can find. It's a, a typical Revel box. Okay, so well, first thing we can see is there's two sets of bagged screws. So there is the um, orbiter screw, uh, orbiter sprue, um, which is self-contained. Um, so that would probably be the same if you bought the orbiter-only version, and uh, probably indeed if you bought the shuttle carrier aircraft version. There are the instructions, which are very typical Revel instructions of. Uh, Poor quality paper and black and white printing. Um, comes with a set of transfers. Um, so that's very handy. They look okay. They look very typically uh, good quality. They have um, some carrier film, but they're sort of moderate gloss. But I don't think I'll be using most of these, as I want to show you. Um, the typical Rebel instructions and steps line drawings uh, for the shuttle orbiter. The shuttle orbiter does come with the parts for the space lab um, and even an astronaut so it can be made um, as the orbiter itself however having included the um, stack you may as well make it. So painting guides include painting for the tiles. This would be appropriate for Enterprise only because Enterprise was never fitted with the proper tiles. The other shuttles of course had tiles uh, this is the um, representation of the crawler, the uh, launch pad, mobile launch pad carrier, which um, this stands on. I don't know if I'll be using this, but I will be using the launch pad base. Uh, this is a bit s sort of silly, really, and it's very under scale, also of red. Okay, so that's making the uh, external tank and the boosters. Very simple instruction by the look of things, and there's a painting guide for the SRBs and the ET. The final part in the box is the um, external tank parts and the crawler part. So you can see that's actually, even though it's 144 scale, it's a very significantly sized model. There is a 172nd version of the space shuttle available and you can imagine that is quite a very large model indeed because it is twice the size of this. Well, you can see this is actually a, a two-part box, which is better than Rebel usually give you. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the parts. This is the uh, one of the main orbiter sprues, which has part of the fuselage and the wing. Uh, so we can see that the fuselage and the tail are together. Um, we have a representation of the... Um, or the, uh, not OLS, RCS thrusters on the side, but not on the top of the nose, which is a bit of an issue. Presumably they, well, they are represented in the decals. 
Um, we have the wing. It looks like we have uh, raised panel lines only, which reflects the age of this kit. There are some marks on the plastic as well. There's quite a lot of flash everywhere, to be honest. There's um, a lot of flash on the sprues themselves, and there's quite a bit of flash on the parts. Um, it does look like this is quite an old mould. Uh, we have the um, end of the um, orbiter where the engines uh, locate in these sort of um, ball and socket um, gimbal mounts. We have some of the landing gear. We have we have the OMS thruster, which looks, looks very poorly moulded. It might even be short shot. Oh, I know it's just flash, I think. So it does look like this kit will need quite a lot of cleanup. Look at the eject pin, massive eject pins on the undercarriage doors, which will be shut um, for me, uh, fortunately, because I'm building it in the stack. But there's a lot of flash on them. Uh, undercarriage legs look okay. The wings have quite a bit of flash, and as I say, it looks like the mold is quite dirty. So we have raised detail representing the um, reinforced uh, carbon carbon wing air uh, leading edge um, protector that's represented as that's represented as raised detail you can see it on this wing as well at uh, the underside of the wing and we have the uh, thermal blanket insulation represented as um, raised lines now you can see this also on the um, fuselage itself. If I make it catch the light, it's on there. There's also no um, uh, Druge parachute holder on the uh, tail, which means that this actually represents the orbiter as built. If you're doing a later orbiter after about 1992 when Endeavour was built, they all had. Um, parachute enclosures added at the bottom of the tail to have a scratch build that. Uh, so yes we can see the location of the um, tiles on the fuselage is suggested with a, um, a sort of matte finish in the plastic. Um, there's no demarcation on the plastic itself between the um, black tiles for the higher temperature and the white tiles, the lower temperature, or for the Nomex and blankets, which are on the nose and the top of the orbiter cabin. Um, but we do see where we have the panels and the blankets on the side. These are represented by these raised lines. Uh, these look like the bulkheads. There's no detail on the bulkheads, but because I'll have the doors closed um, on the uh, payload bay, that's not a particular problem. We have here the RCS parts of the OMS pods, they look a bit rough and um, the um, thrusters themselves are closed up so uh, not a big deal as I'm doing that on the pad but if you're doing it in orbit with the um, payload bay revealed that would be an issue. <coughs> this is the, this is the other half of the orbiter, this is the port side, we can see again the, the detail uh, matte finish on the nose of the orbiter and then um, sort of inside uh, raised detail for the rest of the orbiter and the rudder, two part rudder uh, we have the port wing, same as the starboard wing and we have the three uh, space little main engine um, nozzles here, these look Fairly plain, obviously uh, it lacks the piping detail you can see on the side, but that can be added with stretch sprue. I believe there are aftermarket um, resin nozzles you can get. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any detail inside, uh, and it's sm uh, smooth inside. And I, yeah, ma molding marks which aren't really present. Um, we also have the OMS pods, the orbital maneuvering system pods, which have the um, OMS engines for. Um, changing orbit and for uh, retro uh, boosting for re-entry. These look pretty much bereft of detail and 
fully ragged on this one here. Uh, a bit of flash as well, so this kit looks like it's it's seen better days. Um, yeah, so yeah, it doesn't again a bit of flash in the fuselage as well, so this will need clean up. Not sure how good the fit is going to be. It doesn't look particularly encouraging. These are the payload bay doors again, quite a lot of flash, uh, and also quite significant. Um, ejector pin uh, marks with flash as well. Uh, if you were doing this in orbit with the payload bay open uh, you would need to put the um, radiators on the inside in addition to cleaning up and detailing the inside of the doors. I think I may have spoken too soon. This is the payload bay. So this is the actual payload bay itself which sits inside the um, payload bay of the fuselage halves. There's a bit of detail but there's also um, that was ribbing detail only really and there is uh, eject pin marks inside. You can see them. Um, they're not too deep. You can be quite easily sorted out. Um, not much in the way of other detail of um, um, smaller uh, piping or anything like that in here and no representation of the airlock door I've noticed, unless that is on one of the other sprues. I think these are actually the radiator panels, but they are very uh, flashy and not very good. This is a, a part of the payload which comes with this, and this is the astronaut figure in uh, a spacesuit. Now, I'm not sure if the space shuttle has um, or had tethers without a um, life support. Um, backpack at least that with the uh, obviously in the 80s they used the um, uh, man maneuvering system only a couple of times before the Challenger accident but this has a uh, sort of Ed White or Alex Leonov style um, full umbilical so that's a, um, a payload with astronaut looks a little bit crude but uh, not too bad for 170 second scale and we have the payload itself, so this is the Space Lab, the European um, laboratory module that was flown on several missions uh, over a, a 20 year period. So you can see this is just essentially a um, cylindrical pressure module which is inside the, the um, payload bay. Uh, this is the airlock and this is the sort of um, holding um, pallet which was in there. When it uh, was in use it had additional pallets that would fit behind that carried um, other instruments. Uh, it doesn't seem to come with a satellite, perhaps one would be able to scratch build a satellite if you wanted to. Um, and maybe there are aftermarket satellites available, I haven't looked. Again this is a, of a similar detail and quality for the rest of the orbit, a bit, a bit messy, a bit rough, not too much surface detail and uh, looks like marks in the mould as well so I think this is certainly quite an old kit and we also have a representation of the RMS arm, the remote, uh, is it remote maneuvering, no remote, I can't remember the name of it, the Canadarm as it is called or was called. And Canadarm 2 is now on the International Space Station. So that's the, I'm not actually sure the Canadarm would have been carried when the um, space lab was used, it was only carried on missions where it was needed. So this, these are the clear parts, they are separately bagged and it looks like we have a stand as well. So let's open these. Okay, so we have um, a very old, very small looking stand for the size of the orbit really. Very uh, scratchy, uh, rough detail with map of the Americas on it. We have, yep, and the only clear part we actually have are the cockpit windows which are not very good at all. They are um, Fairly scratchy looking, not particularly clear, but I will be painting these black on the inside anyway, so all we'll really have is a, a glossy face visible through the transfers that represent the, uh, the framing. And I doubt, looking at the rest of the kit, whether the um, fit will be particularly good, so there might be actual some filling around this, maybe some PVA glue. So I'll not be using the stand either, uh, which looks not very good, but if you were to use it, it might be best to paint the inside um, black or something. Um, that doesn't look as crap. We 
have here the external tank which is moulded very simply indeed in just two, uh, two halves. Um, it's a relatively simple uh, thing considering that it is sprayed with foam uh, at the factory. So surface detail is going to be quite simple and quite um, uh, large um, in real life as well so perhaps this is a suitable representation of it. Um, it doesn't have the uh, sort of manhole cover um, at the bottom, which you'd have to represent, although you couldn't probably couldn't see it um, when you were uh, when it was on the stack. Uh, a little bit of flash around the edge. So I'm not particularly confident um, of how well these are actually going to fit together. I think this looks like a job for filling and sanding. To be honest, um, we have the various drain um, or lightning rod um, lines represented, moulded in, and the main oxygen line which runs from the oxygen tank which is in the nose um, to the engine uh, feed through to the orbiter here. That's represented as a separate pipe I think will be here and that's the hydrogen line. Uh, another drain line here and the inter inter uh, inter tank section here is represented uh, ribbed. Oh, and there are also some sink marks from the uh, lining pins here, so that's going to be it's going to need filling. Uh, but as I say, this is going to be uh, in real life. It was sprayed with foam, so it wouldn't have had a particularly fine surface detail. Uh, obviously, for all but the first two launches, and. Uh, also, in addition, the Enterprise test stack in the late 70s. These were not painted, so they were the orange colour of the foam. On the first couple of launches, they were painted white, although they looked more like grey because it wasn't thick paint, but they didn't paint them after that uh, to save weight because the paint um, didn't really um, matter. It was there to keep it cool, but in practice, it wasn't too much of a, a problem. Okay, this is quite a large sprue and it has the SRBs which are again just two halves but again these are quite simple um, uh, boosters because they were um, uh, essentially uh, steel tubes made out of sections like this um, with the uh, nozzle and uh, furring at the end and the nose cone at the top and they were full of the solid rocket fuel with a, um, a essentially a, a core running through the centre uh, which the flame um, travelled out. The igniters were in the nose cone. So these are quite simple structures um, represented by raised de detail which probably is accurate. I'm not sure we have a representation of the um, uh, mounting brackets really. Um, these are the mounting brackets for the orbiter. Uh, these are the forward mounting brackets, I think. And these are the uh, fuel lines running from the tank to the orbiter. So these are fairly fine looking. Uh, would they able to take the weight of the orbiter? I don't know. <laughs> There's only three points of contact between the orbiter and the tank. And the. Uh, ah, when you look at the um, structure here. Uh, the weight of the R orbiter is partly borne by these two lines, so they mustn't be rebel themselves aren't placing too much um, too much uh, trust in these um, representations of the burners. So these are the two supports. On the actual launch pad there are two supports which go towards the wings, which I'm not sure of the purpose of. Uh, that would be a more accurate representation. Uh, the nose cones must be on another uh, screw. Looking at the SRBs, we have a significant amount of flash. That is just flash. So I expect there to be a bit of filling going on here. But again, as these are relatively simple, uh, simple detail, it's not too much of a big deal. This is the only other sprue. Um, so these are the nose cones for the SRBs, which are just cones. They are simple. They have quite heavy incised detail for the uh, small boosters which uh, projected away from the um, tank when they separate. 
these are I think the uh, sort of pads it fits into on the launch pad which is here and these are the nozzles of the SRB which are just simple sort of very simple and with no internal detail at all I think that uh, could probably do with drilling out so that would be better to have just a view inside the hollow rocket rather than uh, a blank plate with some ejector pin marks and this is the actual uh, launch pad itself, a very simple representation, it's not particularly accurate, I wouldn't read too much about it. These are for the SRVs and this is sort of the representation of the flame pit for the orbiter. And what we have here are the tracks for the crawler. These are very crudely detailed, but I think this, this is just a sort of um, fancy, fancy stand rather than an actual representation of the crawler. So these are the sides with uh, some suggestion of plating. So, um, as I mentioned when I was looking at the instructions earlier, the uh, thermal protection system of the orbiter, which consists essentially of the carbon-carbon um, nose cone and leading edges of the wings, uh, black tiles which are on the underside of the orbiter, um, white tiles which are many on the nose and the wings, and also um, Nomex sort of uh, blankets, which are fabric blankets, which cover some of the nose and um, most of the rest of the orbiter, which are very prominent um, in photographs, particularly photographs uh, taken in space. It does actually look like um, blankets covering the uh, orbiter because that's exactly what they are. Um, this is not too uh, well represented in this kit. It essentially um, instructs you to paint the um, underside black and the top side white, or more accurately, it tells you to paint the nose black and the underside sort of off black to represent the scorching, which you, which the, uh, which you see the channel, the tiles are very quickly discolored, and they are only re replaced when they need to be replaced. Um, so yes, this would only be really uh, representative of um, Enterprise. Uh, you could make Enterprise uh, a very accurate model of the Enterprise um, with this, because the Enterprise never flew in space. Uh, it was a prototype um, and was never fitted with the full um, tile system. Uh, and if you look at photographs of it, even today, it just has a plain black underside and plain black and white nose. So if you wanted to make a model of the Enterprise, uh, this would be the perfect way to do it. Obviously, uh, other orbiters had a full tile system and a black underside uh, isn't really going to show up very well. It has... Um, it's a very prominent uh, effect, the, especially the um, discolouring of the tiles and even the thermal blankets you see. So, um, this isn't represented. It isn't represented by um, the transfers either, but let's have a look at them anyway. These are the transfers that come with the uh, model. You can see that the um, RCS pods, uh, the forward RCS pod rather, and the um, cockpit windows are represented by these transfers. And there are some transfers on the decals for the uh, tiles on the leading edge of the rudder, uh, leading edge of the fin rather, and the rudder. Um, and uh, for the forward part of the um, OMS pods and the hatch, but that's all you get with the model and you get markings. Again, only for the surviving orbiters, so you can't do, you can't do models of um, Challenger or Columbia. The uh, yellow stripes here are for the SRBs. Um, as are these other black stripes. The black stripe here is for the port side SRB which had um, a black line so you could tell which which it was. It does come with both the old and the uh, original scheme as it were and the uh, more recent scheme it has markings for both. Obviously the um, Enterprise never wore the more updated scheme and I don't think the worm was retained on the payload de uh, pillar bay doors here. I like the worm logo. I think it's um, I think it's very futuristic looking. Um, so I may make my version of it with with the worm logo 
so the older version. So these are the decal details, decals that come with it and they're fine. However, doing it this way would not result in a particularly um, realistic look because it lacks the tiles. I don't think uh, it's really practical to paint the tiles um, by hand. Um, I did read a very old magazine that my dad had um, about building one of these. That was, a that was a magazine from the 1970s and that had painting it um, by using a piece of metal grill and spraying that and uh, allowing that to represent the difference in colour between the tiles and that isn't a bad idea but I think that wouldn't look particularly realistic. However, there are um, other solutions and what I have chosen to do is use the aftermarket tile decals that are available. These are the ones that I was able to get hold of. These are the Warbird um, sets of aftermarket decals for the Revel 144 Space Shuttle. Uh, there are others available. There are, I think there is one from Cutting Edge, but I wasn't able to get hold of that. And indeed, these weren't in stock um, in any shop that I could find. Hannant's is the main um, online retailer in Britain and was out of stock there. I had to get these from eBay and import them, I think, from Warbird themselves, from the eBay store, um, which ended up being fairly expensive because of the import charges, particularly. Um, but uh, it would be the only way to represent the thermal protection system. So let's have a look at the. Um, let's have a look at them. The it comes in two sets, and originally I was on, only going to get the um, the tiles, but I also decided to go for the um, the markings as well because it comes with uh, a bit more detailed markings than the uh, rebel ones. So let us start with the. Uh, Tile system. So what eventually what we have is the what you get. You get um, just a sort of plastic bag with the guide and with the card piece to protect it and the decals themselves. So essentially, what you have is a, a large um, transfer, a large decal for the underside, and again other large. Uh, decals for the various surfaces. Now, obviously these are too big to apply at once and what I will be doing is cutting these into smaller parts um, and, and attaching them one at a time. And I think I shall be making use of a uh, decal setting solution, which actually I've never done before. So that will be interesting. Um, the decals themselves, you can see the um, various differences in coloration on the tiles, which is um, a very good effect. And you can see that the underside is uh, a lighter black because of the discoloration than the, um, the sides of the nose, which are here, and the um, uh, black tiles which fringe the um, flap at the back and the uh, sides of the ailerons or elevons. Um, you can see that there is, um, it doesn't seem to be a decal for the rudder itself, which is a bit of a shame. Now, in terms of quality, these are ve very nice. Actually, you can see there's hardly any um, decal film visible on the actual pieces themselves. There is basically no clear film around the edges, and the decals themselves are uh, nice and glossy. There's also a representation of the Nomex um, fabric on the top of the wings. Now, if you were making a model of um, Columbia, uh, especially for the early flights, Columbia had no Nomex blankets, so that wouldn't be an accurate representation. And also, even on, up until uh, its last mission, Columbia had black um, uh, chines, so the black the um, more sharply um, swept back forward portion of the wings, which is this section here, they were um, full black on um, Columbia throughout its um, service, so you would need to paint those on. Uh, they, these are the um, guide, so that's a very simple way of positioning it, and you are left uh, to paint the 
um, RCS, um, uh, sorry, RCC leading edge and nose cone. That's fine. Uh, and it doesn't have a decal for the um, engine um, face at the back either. But these look like very fine decals and will probably be a much better way of representing it than trying to paint it. I, I predict. Well, we'll see how they actually go down when I when I build it. So that is the first set, the tile set. This is the second set, again from Warbird, um, number 144.05 for this one, 04 for the other. And these are just the markings. Um, again, the same package uh, with guide. And these are the transfers themselves. So we have markings for all of the orbiters. So we can do any of the ones that we please. Obviously, if we were doing Enterprise, we would not use the um, tile decals. Uh, and it has, again, it has the earlier and the later style. So it has the Worm logo um, from the 80s to the 90s. And it also has the NASA um, NASA sort of um, blue, uh, um, I think it's called the Meatball logo, which was used on the wings um, later in the life. Again, I think it says after 1998 was when that was when the markings were changed. So this has essentially similar decals to what the um, Revel decals are, except that it has um, uh, better representations of the tiles where it has them. It looks like it has better uh, representation of the forward RCS pod, and it has indeed representation of the um, nozzles being covered, which is how it is on launch. The nozzles are covered with uh, a piece of rubber or similar to stop anything uh, making its home inside before the launch and blocking them. Uh, so there's basically um, four covers for an, for an object damage. Now this does come with um, transfers for the rudder, which were lacking from the original from the first set. That's good news. However, it does come with other transfers that represent the tiles on the rudder and the ailerons, and you can see that these do not match the first set. So the first set is, um, it does have discoloration, but it doesn't have the brown discoloration, um, which these one do. So these don't really match. So I think you're going to use one or the other uh, in terms of the um, tail transfers, but the, um, the actual rudder um, surface transfers are um, they're fine. They will actually, they will actually match more or less. So that's fine. Uh, we have a representation of the hinges on the side of the payload bay, so that's good. I don't think, I don't think the Revel. It does have that. But this is very similar to the Revel one, except perhaps with again very very slight um, carrier film, hardly noticeable. If I put the Revel and the uh, Warbird decals next to each other, we can see. Perhaps that the colouring of the um, Warbird ones is a bit more toned down. It looks to me like the uh, American flag is better represented. Uh, more realistic colours. Um, the yes, there's less, there's much more carrier film on the on the uh, Revel ones. Uh, the printing, just from normal distance, looks. Um, doesn't look particularly different apart from the colours, which look better on the Warbird side. Um, comparing the decals for the um, cockpit windows, they look much better, or a bit finer, a bit more um, detail going on, um, a bit sharper overall on the Warbird one. So definitely an improvement there. So I'd say these were, if I was making this, I would say definitely go for, if you can get hold of them, if they are in stock, the um, tile decals or the cutting edge ones, which I haven't seen, but I think may, some people have read on the internet, prefer them. Uh, and if you like, perhaps if you wanted to do a model of Challenger or Columbia, um, or you wanted to have decals from the back of the uh, engine face, then I would plump for the marking sheet. Now, so these are the um, decals, but what about the other 
part of the heat shield, which are the Normex um, blankets. Now, these are very prominent in the photographs, especially in the photographs taken from space from the ISS when it was in the docking um, maneuvers. And there are a number of ways of doing this. Uh, I've read online of a, a chap who was actually talking about um, transferring, um, doing the textured um, textured coating that was on several different types of German tanks during the Second World War, and he was making a model of those, and he was using um, putty and a sort of metal comb to apply the texture, and I thought about using that method to apply the um, Nomex, um, Nomex blankets on the main part of the orbiter. But I didn't think that would be the best idea. And then I read uh, another chap's um, build of the 1100 um, 1100 Tamiya space shuttle, and he used surgical tape to represent the um, Nomex tiles. And I think that's probably the way to go with tape. But I think surgical tape at 144th might be a bit of overkill. So I think I might use tissue paper or even cigarette paper um, coated with. Um, PVA glue, and I think that will, um, at this scale, probably just give you that blankety appearance um, before painting. And then when I paint it, I will apply with the brush just uh, discoloration to some of these some of these blankets, as you see, and perhaps using the um, the molded. Um, you can see on the actual model uh, the molded. Uh, lines which I will probably end up sanding off but these could be a useful guide for the tissue paper uh, for the um, blankets because the texture of the blankets probably won't show up at 1 to 144 scale but the actual edges of the blankets probably will so I think that's why the tissue paper method is the way to the way to do it so some final thoughts um, it's an old kit it's pretty rough in places and it needs some uh, filler, definitely quite a bit of filler, but again, it's uh, 1 1 44 scale. The surface detail will watch out very well, but it make, it'll make, should make an impressive model, uh, especially with the, uh, the decals. I would say if you're going to make a model of a space shuttle apart from Enterprise, you will need to um, plump some kind of decals and um, I would say that the, from what I've seen, the Warbird ones look very good very good quality printing, we'll see how you actually go down, but that, uh, that is my look at the Rebel 144 scale.